everyone, I'm Jane Willingale from Silver Zone Printables and today's video is about my process for creating greetings cards for those special occasions. And if you like these sort of videos then click the subscribe button and hit the notification bell to ensure you catch these videos as I do them. I'm a creator in common with a lot of people and along with patchwork my next favourite pastime is creating special cards for my family and friends. The lockdown has caused several issues with regards to getting out and buying cards, so what better way to redress this than to make my own? Handmade cards are a bit special to the people concerned, and as most of these have been well received, I thought I'd share with the interested few the process I use to create them. Nothing particularly difficult or even unique, but definitely makes the end result look pretty spectacular. We're going to go from this to this and I'll show you the different steps I take to achieve that. Don't worry I've sped up the video so you don't have to sit through hours of watching me draw, that would certainly put you to sleep. Please forgive the video quality in places, time lapse with an iPhone is great fun but I'm still learning how to set the phone up for the best results. There are a few things you need. A printer, any particular printer will do, um, doesn't matter whether it's an inkjet or a laser jet as long as it will print out an A4 sheet. A light box would be useful if you have one but you don't need it. You can make do with a plastic box, the kind you pick up in a craft shop for storing accessories in, pop a light bulb in it, put the lid back over and use the top of the lid as the desktop. That was my light box for a long time until I received the real thing as a present. You just need to be able to see the underlying print well enough to trace the main outline. You'll need a reasonable thickness of card, suitable to give as a greetings card. This Centura Pearl is the type I like to use, available from the website you can see on the label. It's 300 grams thickness and gives a nice quality of card. And I like it because it has like a pearlized finish, which I hope you can see here in the video. Um, with like a, a glossy shine on it. It gives a nice finish to the cards and the pens glide well over it. You need a set of permanent markers. I have a range of thicknesses as you can see but you only need about three. A two point, a four point or five point and an eight point cover most eventualities. The thick black sharpie is for colouring in and can of course be any colour depending on your design. A range of colouring pens, these are Tombow dual pens as they have two points as the name implies. The brush end is great for blending and painting and the fine point end for outlines. You'll need a choice of glitter. Fine glitter is better because it fills nicely. Any colours will do depending on your design. These are ones I've picked up from various craft shows over the years but they are all available on the internet from online craft shops these days and it lasts for ages as you use very little as you will see. I also use the ready glue mixed ones but I have found they do dry out and clog up the end if you're not careful. A fine pointed paintbrush for painting on the PVA uh, but a cheap one because it will get stiff from the glue over time. PVA craft glue, you'll actually see a different one used in the video because it, but it turned out to not be too good, it was very thin so I went back to this tried and trusted type. Again, not expensive, you can get smaller bottles available from any craft shop and it lasts. A small dish for pouring the glue into, you really do not need very much. Oh and a pencil and a good rubber, make sure the end is clean otherwise you'll leave dirty marks on your card. I start off by creating this image on my PC. Almost any program will do this as it's just text. This one's set to fit in an A5 size, half of A4 and the size card I like to make. This particular font is called Elephant but you can use any font you prefer though I suggest one that is fairly bold and allows you to pick out or add a feature to it as you'll see in this video. You don't need to create an outline if your particular program does not have that feature as you're going to trace it anyway. I use Adobe Illustrator which allows me to create outlines but I'm still going to trace it so the line needs to be fairly thick about three to four points so you can see it through the card on the light box. Print the image out and then using the light box trace it onto your card. 
Remember to use the lower half of the card, as it would be when it is folded. You can also trace the internal message on the opposite side of the card, again on the lower end of that side as shown here. The photo is unfortunately not as clear as the real thing, but I'm sure you get the idea. Trace the outline and you will end up with the pencil version of this. Then go over that with your permanent marker in whatever thickness you prefer. I used a five point pen at this stage. Don't worry too much if your lines are not perfect, you won't see them at the end. As I also like to create outlines, I do that at this stage so that any further decoration can fit around it, like this. From this point, you can decorate your card in any way and with any design you wish. As mine is a birthday card, I've added balloons and different coloured shapes. The internal features of the numbers can stay in pencil as they will not be seen at all. I also like to outline all of my coloured shapes. Again, this is up to you how you wish to decorate your card. I just like the, the way it pulls out the features of the card. If all that seems like too much effort, and it does take a little time, I have some card templates all done and ready to colour and decorate in my Etsy shop and on my website. I've popped the links below, you can download and print and off you go. From here, the colouring and decorating is pretty much however you want to do it. I've videoed my version and I'll describe how to do the glitter at the end. And also just to say that whichever colour glitter you're going to use, it's a good idea to colour that section in underneath with the same colour ink. And then if there's just any slight discrepancies of the glitter, it won't be noticeable because the colour will show through instead. Now we reach the glitter part. Do not be tempted to add too much glue at once. You'll see in the video I do each colour section separately and the large numbers separately. The reason being that the glue dries out too quickly otherwise and the glitter does not adhere properly. Having painted the glue into the areas you want to, add the different colour glitters separately. Don't mix the colours, you'll have a multicoloured variety at the end if you do. Pour plenty on pat down to press it firmly onto the glue and then tip your card and the surplus glitter will drop off. Have a clean sheet of paper underneath to collect the surplus. You can reuse it and pour it back into the tubes that your glitter comes in. You'll be surprised how little you use. The glitter stems in the shapes I've done with the glitter glue. Less precise than the PVA painting technique, but effective enough for the centres. Likewise for the odd dabs around the card, just to give a bit of sparkle here and there.
there we have it. From a simple printout to what I hope you will agree is a fairly spectacular card, it will more than make up for not being able to be there during lockdowns or if you just simply cannot visit. It can be posted quite safely and more than lets the recipient know that you've been thinking of them. All of mine have been very well received with the added bonus that you can create whatever age card you wish, often not available in shops. You can use this process to copy and trace any image you wish to feature on your card. So you could go to places like Creative Fabrica or Vecteasy for images, print them instead of numbers or letters and follow the same steps. I hope you try this out and enjoy the process. That's what craft should be about for me. Having fun and maybe bringing some pleasure to another. Let me know what you thought about the process if you tried it. I'd love to know and, and maybe post some pictures of any that you've tried. It's not quick, but I do find it very therapeutic. And don't forget, if you've enjoyed the video, to please click the like symbol. And remember to subscribe and click the notification bell to be the first to know when I post more videos. And as always, thank you for supporting my channel. You are always appreciated for your time. I've been Jane Willingale of Silver Zone Printables. Till the next time, stay safe everyone. <laughs>